so this is either a warm-up for um, some classes and for some classes this is a homework assignment depending on what year you actually took this course. However, uh, we're going to jump in and uh, as you can see this warm-up is I call sample test items because these are the kinds of things that um, I'm going to ask you to take a look at and be able to um, analyze and evaluate on an assessment. So let's look at item number one. We are evaluating the limit as h goes to zero of cosine of pi over three plus h minus one half over h. So hopefully with your math eyes you are seeing a y number two minus a y number one and we know that h is like delta x and we have x number two minus x number one. h is approaching zero so this, this appears to be a derivative and here with my math eyes, I am seeing a c value. So c equal to pi over 3. And back here, I am seeing what I believe to be f of c. So what I believe I have here is a point-specific derivative of f of x, in which in this case is cosine of x at x equal to pi over 3. All right, so the function that we're that I've identified is cosine of x. Whoops, let's throw that in the trash can. Um, the a value of c, because it is point specific, is pi over 3. <clears throat> and the limit represents, I've already written that down, but you can see it again. The limit statement represents the derivative of cosine of x at pi over 3. And then to evaluate the limit, we're actually going to find the derivative of cosine of x. We know that the derivative of cosine of x is equal to negative sine x. And then we're going to evaluate that at pi over 3. So negative sine of pi over 3 or 60 degrees. So that limit from our trig days is going to be negative root 3 over 2. Um, express the limit using calculus notation. Of course, when I say calcul calculus notation, I'm basically saying without using the limit notation. And I've already written that up above, so that means to take the derivative. So the d dx, remember, d is like delta, is change in y. So in this case, my y is the function. So change in y, or change in f of x, um, over change in x. So that's ex the expression using calculus notation without the limit notation. In problem number two, we have an exponential function, 5e e to the x plus 12. And read very carefully. Determine the values of x, so we're trying to find x, such that the slope of the tangent line, so you got to learn how to translate, slope of tangent line is either instant rate of change or derivative is in mathematics generally means equal 10. So right here, the words are telling me what to do. Derivative is 10. So that tells me I want to find the derivative of f of x, f prime of x, and set that equal to 10. So the derivative of 5e e to the x, so if I do f prime of x, the derivative of 5e e to the x is 5e e to the x, and the derivative of 12 is 0. So I'm going to set 5e e to the x equal to 10, and I'm going to solve. And I have that right under here. So there's my 5e e to the x. Setting it equal to 10. Divide both sides by 2, and I get e to the x equal to 2. Now think back to your algebra 2 days. To undo e, we're going to take the ln of both sides. So I have the ln of 2 on the left side, and the ln of e to the x on the right side and E and LN undo each other. I'm not going to say cancel. E and LN undo each other, and that leaves me with X. Um, <clears throat> or you can use the, um, the uh, property of exponents that allows me to bring the, the power of X. So I'm just kind of showing it in long form. I don't really have to have this next step. That I can bring the power of X in front and then the ln of e, ln and e undo each other. You didn't really need that step. You could go directly to the x. So x is equal to ln of 2, which is a perfectly fine number, and it doesn't need a calculator 
to estimate it. So the value of x for which f of x has a tangent line slope of 10 is ln of 2. And so I have given you a graph. <clears throat> Mine is computer produced. I asked you to sketch, sketch a graph and the tangent line. But I wanted you to be able to see that <clears throat> this value of x right here, if you were to go to your calculator and type in ln of 2, you would get approximately 0.693. So that's the, the red graph is the exponential function and the blue line is the tangent line. Then we're writing the equation of a tangent line. So remember, we're going to use our point slope form. y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So our given value we found the x value to be, <coughs> excuse me, ln of 2. And do we have the y value already? No. So we have to generate the y value. So ln of 2 and the y value that goes with that when we substitute ln of 2 is 22. You can see that from right there. And you can figure that out by substituting 5e to the ln of 2, uh, lost my function, I think that's plus, two, plus 12, plus 12. So remember e and ln undo each other, and so that leaves me with 5 times 2, which is 10. 10 plus 12 is 22, so that is my y value. My slope I already generated to be, uh, that's what was given. The derivative was equal to 10. So I'm going to substitute 10 in place of the slope. I'm going to substitute ln of 2 in place of x sub 1. I'm going to substitute 22 in place of y sub 1. And when I do, there's my point slope form. There's my substitution of values. And then the last thing that I want to do is to always get y by itself. So that's that little warm-up. Hopefully that helps you and helps you to get ready for an upcoming assessment.